Authors Showcase. I'm Dixie Jarko with Tom Cannon, and today... Hello. Hello. <laughs> this is Authors Showcase. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Dixie Jarko. I'm Tom Cannon. And we're talking to Lewis Clark III today. This is our second time talking to you. A lot of things have changed. Yeah, I had uh, another book published, and um, things are going really well. Was it the Paul Horning book that we talked about last time? <laughs> 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 no, I haven't found an author, uh, publisher for that. It was, um, but it's still a dream, and I did finish it, 70-some thousand words, and um, we're still looking for a publisher, but the more I read it, the more I see I have to do a lot of rewriting. So the book you did get published is this right here? Yes, sir. How to Be an Indian in the 21st Century. And this is published by? The Wisconsin Historical Society Press the oldest publishing house in Wisconsin, publishing since 1848. This is a paid commercial. <laughs> <laughs> We're okay with that. Yes, um, that's how, highly did, prestigious. how did this come about, and, and what's this book about? <clears throat> well, the way it came about was I was doing, working for the Lakefly Literary Conference, and I, I, did, I do a good Carlton the doorman. I always <laughs> help people, and that's, that's my forte in life that I, can, I, I try to be helpful. And um, our leader, Ruth Percy, came and she looked kind of out of sorts and actually having no brains in my head once in a while, I just said, is there something wrong? <laughs> and she just looked at me and said, can you talk for an hour? <laughs> well, of course I can. So I volunteered and I gave a speech for an hour and it started there. Um, I was doing speeches about my poetry, and I was welcomed at the Wisconsin Fellowship of Poets Society annual conference as a main speaker, and someone said, came up to me after my speech and said, that speech should really be in book form. Um, like Leo Bascali used to put his books in, his speeches in book form. So, um, so I did, I started putting it in book form, and then I was invited, well, actually I was, I don't know if you'd call it, I wasn't quite subpoenaed, but I was invited <laughs> down to Madison to talk about, the, with the government, to talk about the mascot issue. And when I came back, a group from Berlin Lutheran Church were sending a group of teenage um, parishioners out, to, out west to work on a reservation and they wanted to know what it was like to be an Indian and they asked me to come on and give a talk and it was one of the best talks I've ever given. I spoke for an hour and then they asked me questions for an hour and a half and it was really good. Those kids are just wonderful and a few weeks later uh, one of the mothers called up and she was part of this group, this Wisconsin group a home society group and they have a big convention with maybe a thousand members meeting up in Stevens Point and she asked me if I would come and talk to them and uh, she said what's the name of your speech and mm -hmm. I really didn't have one <laughs> and out of the blue I just blurted out how to be an Indian in the 21st century so from there um, and, and what tribe are you? you I'm from Oneida, I'm from okay. the Oneida Reservation up in Green Bay, that's where I grew up um, so from there, I had the Paul Horney book finished, and I had this book finished, and um, I gave a speech at the Amor Kiwanis Club, and one of their members said, why don't you send both the books down to um, Madison for the, to the Wisconsin Historical Society Press. So I did, and a few days later, I got a call and they invited me down to meet them. And of course, I'm thinking the Packer book. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so I get down there, and the lady in my dashboard, the GPS lady, and I have <laughs> issues from time to time. <laughs> and when we got down to the end of State Street, I think she decided to get back at me to prove that she had a sense of humor. She told me to turn right. And so I went down the sidewalk at the UW-Madison campus <laughs> right to the parking lot, but people were waving as I was <laughs> You were on the sidewalk? On the sidewalk. Oh, dear. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, yeah. 
I get to the, my parking lot and um, we go up and we meet with the editor and the two editors actually, um, Kate and Kathy, and um, they told me that they liked the Packer book and I'm thinking, well, good, and mm -hmm. they told me that they did just did two Packer books, how much work it is, and they don't think they want to do another Packer book for oh. a long time. Oh. So, and then they looked at me and they said, and we don't even accept submissions like the book on how to be an Indian in the 21st century. Mm. And I was in total shock, because why would you call me down there? I kind of felt like that Make America Beautiful Indian on the commercial, stand there with one tear. The tear. Kind of <laughs> but then they said the magic words. They said, but we read it, and it's different. It's unique. And we, if you would be willing to not have it published as a pure poetry book. We'd like to publish it for you. And um, so that's wow. where it started. How I, often does that uh, happen? I don't know. Um, I, I was lucky enough to let, I sent it down to the University of Arkansas at Little Rock where they do the Sequoia National Research Center. and. Um, they had published my first book, and when Daniel Littlefield, the head of the English department, read it, he sent it back and it said he said it was too good to be a chapbook that I had to find a better, a bigger publisher for wow, it. Wow, nice. And um, he said it was one of the most unique and creative things that he had seen in years. And um, nice. so that's what we're playing off of, that it's a unique and creative way to tell a story of being an Indian in the 21st century. And I think that's what you really have to do nowadays. And there's so many books on many topics. You have to have a unique take that will really hook readers in. So your book is part chapbook, part memoir. Yeah, it, it, it actually turned out quite well because what I was trying to do, and I don't know if this sounds egotistical, but I was trying to capture poetry for everybody not just for the people who study poetry and because um, I, I took my poetry classes and I know how to look deep into a poet's into a poet's mind and discern what he's trying to say but sometimes you just like to hear poetry and make it easy um, mus music is poetry I was raised on I was raised on bubblegum music basically um, Tommy Boyce and Bobby Hart the monkeys they wrote all the most most of the music for the monkeys and that's the era I grew up in and their their music was poetry to me so I wanted to write something like that and um, I was introduced to Langston Hughes he's uh, the great black poet and he wrote his his poetry in a blues cadence and so I wanted to do my poetry in a cadence that appealed to me and so I remember when I was a child I went to a powwow at the baseball diamond and this was a real gathering of the Indians and there were teepees and tents and they brought logs out of the woods for sitting, there were campfires and there were drums and up by the home plate there were three drums and the drums beat all day and all night and that's not the drums that you hear on um, TV where it goes boom, 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 boom. boom, boom, boom. No, these drums just was a steady beat that sounded sounded like your heartbeat. If if you're in a real quiet place and you hold your breath, you can hear your heartbeat, and that's what those drums sounded like. So I was searching for a cadence, and I started writing in that cadence, and people started liking it. Um, but I didn't write to have people like it. I wrote as a to cleanse my soul, I guess is the word I would use, because um, growing up in the Indian and living in the 21st century as an Indian, you, you face certain difficulties. And instead of, you can't fight all the time, so I just started writing things down, and, and I wrote for me. And then all of a sudden, somebody wanted to publish it. And uh, so that's where it started out. I, I was, I've been very lucky. And for example, um, one of your poems I was reading, um, you talk about how 
in the movies, which is most people's impression of Indians, they don't even scalp correctly. <laughs> and your father was kind of appalled that, that nobody knew this, so he told you how they actually did it, and you wrote a poem about it. So I really like that you have the backstory of, you know, where did this come from, what is it about, and how does it relate to an average reader who's reading your poetry? I was, I was very lucky because um, my dad was a storyteller, and I think most of the people that I grew up with were storytellers, and instead of like, well, I guess we were really lucky because we only had three TV stations back then, mm -hmm. and um, on Saturday nights we'd sit and my parents would talk and they would tell stories, and um, our neighbors would come over and they would talk and tell stories, and, and I got to hear all kinds of stories and different things that they did in life, and um, so I was very blessed, and so I, I became I guess a storyteller. And uh, your poems in the book, I mean, they run from humorous to very powerful. Um, which I'm thinking just now, I have, uh, recommend vol um, following you on your Facebook page, Lewis V. Clark. Um, you posted a poem this several days ago, maybe yesterday. I read it was very powerful. I really loved it. And but you could hear that you're. You were the boom, boom, boom in the... I was very lucky when I got that poem. I'm in a, I'm in a Renshi group with uh, maybe about seven people throughout the United States, and we each write a poem a week, and then we have to take... Uh, well, we, we write one poem a week, a different person writes it, and you take the last line of the poem that the person oh. wrote before you, and the slave named Cat who lives in Ripon and is a teacher in Ripon, wrote a very powerful line, and um, I believe it says something like, from, the com from compost to sprouts wings, or something like that. And then my mind, God's given me this great thing that he just put stuff in my head and it just cadences. And mm -hmm. so I had, I had the first verse and I had the last verse, or stanza, and then the word comes to, fill in the right, the, the rest between it. And um, my cousin has just died last, 55 years old last Sunday, and it just seemed fitting that I put that, I, I worked that type of stuff into it. So how has your life changed? This book has been extremely successful. Um, what's changed with the marketing? And, and they do a lot of the marketing and set you up with different places to go and... Yeah, I have a pub publicist. Wow. And, um, she, she calls and say it says that people would like you to appear here, appear there. Um, I did national public radio a week and a half ago, a show called Native America Calling. They rated the book as for the Native community as the book of the month for nice. July. Um, and it was kind of, kind of uh, interesting. Well, the interesting thing is it was recorded um, Eastern time produced in Anchorage, Alaska, and the uh, host, Tara, lives in Albuquerque. So, oh my but it, so it was done on over the phone, and the place where I work, another commercial, Mill Sweet Farm, mm -hmm. set it up so I could have a little bit extra time off so I could do this. And um, the very first caller, and we had callers from all over the United States, which well, was mm -hmm. quite awesome. And the very first caller, kind of, I guess, would ripped on me for putting such an important subject into poetry because poetry is supposed <laughs> to be flowery and oh, beautiful. Oh my goodness. And um, What do you say to that? It's <laughs> kind nice. of shocking. And, and, um, but it was nice. Um, I can't remember, recall what I said, but when I listened to the replay, I came off quite well. It worked pretty good. And um, then we had ten callers in an hour, and um, it was it was really it, it was fun. And then um, then they called and they want Wisconsin Public Radio wants to do an interview with me, and I'm going to be on the Joy Cardine show. Wow! And mm -hmm. that's nice. For 35 years, I worked for the highway department, and I plowed snow in the winter, and I always listened to Wisconsin Public yeah. Radio. So it's quite an honor to be on the Joy Cardine show. And then this. Oshkosh Authors Group asked me to be on television, and that is really awesome because... Um, <laughs> yeah, you've been the big leagues now. <laughs> well, well, anybody watching this can 
certainly see that I have a face for radio <laughs> and not television. <laughs> so. But uh, yeah, when we interviewed you a couple of years ago. Um, you had your book, Lewis, yeah, Two Shoes, you know, and that. And that's your Indian name, correct? No. That's my white name. That's your white name. <laughs> what happened <laughs> is, is when you're working in the white world, you're afraid to make mistakes or you're afraid not to be working. So a gentleman at work finally started calling me two shoes because I was always working, I was always doing something. And I think that's the way you're supposed to do it anyway. But um, the two shoes came from the white world because huh. I was in goody two shoes. Oh, oh, I never knew that. I've known yeah. you for years. So, so yeah. So your chat, this chat book was well received. Um, and you wrote poems and put them in culverts, <laughs> but mostly, you know, you, you were writing, writing poems as a way, you know, just because it, it was within you and you wanted to get it out. You know, otherwise you were busy raising five kids? We raised six kids and um, we, my wife and I devote our life to raising the children. Um, I did, I didn't know how to tell the ch children how to do something, but I felt that I could show them how to do something. So I went to night school for 25 years <laughs> to get my degree. Oh my goodness. And um, It's amazing. And I did get my degree. And um, What's your degree in? Business communications. Nice. It started out at, in English and then it, well it started out in journalism, went to English, and then because class is hard to get at night. Oh yeah. And it ended up being a business communications class degree. And I, um, now all six of our children have graduated from college. Wow. Mm. And nice. um, I'm very proud of them because I'm half Indian, but three eighths Oneida and one eighth Chippewa. So none of my children actually qualified to be a tribal member, so they didn't really get any help from the Indians. Oh. So when they went to school, it was all on their own. And um, they went to some good schools, UW Oshkosh, Stevens Point, and my four sons graduated from Lawrence University, where they all played baseball. Baseball was very important in our life. And um, last November, we cried when the Cubs won. Oh, we did <laughs> so, too. We did so too. So we had to put put that in there. Thank you. <laughs> so after you, now it's kind of your turn to shine. Your life has changed a little bit since the publication of that book. Um, I don't know if it's because of the publication of the book. Um, that's the foundation that's allowed us to go to other venues, but the other venues don't actually know I'm an author, so they don't. Nobody knows except the people who come to the poetry readings or the readings, which have been very well attended. Um, I was really impressed that it's been, every place that I've gone has been full of people. And um, we sold a lot of books. Um, this Two Shoes has had multiple printings because people are buying it. Um, I had to buy a box of books because but some bookstores aren't carrying the book yet, mm -hmm. and we sold everything. Um, we went up to Minnesota this past week, and everything we brought sold out. But the surprising thing is, in traveling all, all over where people don't know who I am, or my wife and I, oh, and I wanted to say about my wife, about the education. My wife has started theology school this Oh my um, goodness, oh, awesome. It's stud studying theology. So yeah. So we'll all have our degrees someday. Um, <laughs> but people are so nice. Um, we went to Wisconsin Rapids, and we went biking because they had free bikes there. So we went for a bike ride, and um, we asked where would be a good place for to have dinner, and they sent us to this place called the Dirty Ore. And we went in, and um, the lady said there'd be a 20 minute wait, and my wife said, well, could we get a window table? She said, oh, that'd be probably an hour wait. And we said, well, we're not in a hurry, and well, we'll just sit sit here and wait. And um, we ordered a drink, and I don't drink when I'm driving, so I ordered Coke. And um, 
the second round of drinks that they they paid for that was very nice and we just sat and happily and then we got our window seat and an eagle came right in front of oh, us and goodness. caught a fish so that was pretty awesome that is. and then the lady who owned the bar she brought us a book about Wisconsin supper clubs it's a it's a table book you know that you would sit out on your table and um she autographed it and uh, she didn't know that we were writers so people just mm -hmm. treat us so good I was at the farmers market and um, wearing my Cubs hat and um, went to buy some corn gave my six dollars and the gentleman looked at me and goes, oh, Mr. Clark, he says, aren't you happy the Cubs won? I go, yeah. He says, and your book's doing real good, too. Here, you, you don't have to pay for your corn. I mean, wow. people wow. are just nice, and people are just, have always treated us nice, so we're very blessed. So what's next for you? Do you have time, are you writing another book, or? Right now I'm working on a play, and uh, Ryan Wynn, he's a professor at Menominee College in Menominee, Wisconsin. Um, he looked it over and basically he said it was very good. And um, so, but I, I have to edit it because I didn't write it in the right form. Mm -hmm. And so now that's basically what I've been focusing on right now to get that written. Plus, I'd write, like to write a sequel to this if I could. Because mm -hmm. if I thought it was really good and get published, I would have put a lot more stuff <laughs> in there. And you've got tons of stories. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, like I say, I'm a storyteller. Um, the funny thing is that my my poetry, and poetry is really big right now. Um, there's a big section in the New York Times today that just focuses on poetry. And um, there was an article a couple of weeks ago about how in um, poetry in the New York Times and how it should be given back to the people. So with my poetry, well, 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 I lost my train of thought there. What's next for you? Um, I ho hope to just keep writing more poetry and um, having people read it and enjoy it, basically. I, I, am, I think there's a lot of meaning in some of my poems. Um, Pagliacci was an Indian. Um, thanks to Smokey Robinson, I knew who Pagliacci was and mm -hmm. the tears of a clown. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, we just hope that um, we can just keep working and writing and... And you want to do some speaking well, or continue to do speaking. Well, did you say want to? <laughs> actually, actually, <laughs> that's, it's very nice to be out with the people. I hope to do the Oshkosh Lake Fly Conference because that's home. I don't actually have to speak there. I just like being the doorman. <laughs> being <there. laughs> um, and I'm going to be doing a lot more speaking. Um, I was invited to the Lake Fly Liter or not Lake Fly, the Wisconsin Book Festival is in November 4th and 5th. I don't know if I'm going to get to do it because of the work schedule, but mm -hmm. I, I'm planning on it. Um, the Appleton Book Festival, um, I always want to do that one. I will be doing that. And then the book won the Midwest Booksellers Choice Award for 2017. And um, I get to go to Lombard, Illinois, and the publisher is paying for Debbie nice. and I to stay overnight, and I get to do a five-minute speech and pick up some type of award. Wow. You still going to try to publish the Paul Horning book? Yeah, I think it's a good <laughs> book. Um, Maybe this will provide you with a Well, right before, right before we started taping, you were telling us a story. Why don't you tell that right now? Well, at the book launch for How to Be an Indian in the 21st Century, <laughs> There was a lot of people there, and it was like a nice little hall, and it had uh, pillars in the middle. And uh, so while my publisher was giving a speech, I was running around behind the pillars and just yeah. screaming out, Why don't you publish a ball hurting book? <laughs> and uh, so I, I got, we got a few laughs. Um, that's the one thing that I have discovered, though, that um, giving these speeches, and my speeches have gone from about an hour down to 25 minutes because mm -hmm. I've eliminated a lot of the the fun stuff. Not the fun stuff, but the funny stuff because the questions that I've been getting are really heart rendering. They really mm -hmm. do the core of racism and that type of stuff. And I, I found that people want to know what's in my heart and where these poems came from. And 
it's it's getting to be more serious and people are really in, seem seeming to enjoy that part of the book better than the foolishness that I, I sometimes like to give out mm -hmm. and, uh, because I like to see people smile. Well, thank you. This is Lewis V. Clark and this book is How to Be an Indian in the 21st Century and Two Shoes. They're both available where? Where can people find them? Well, basically the only way for way you can get this one is um, if you come to one of my readings and we only sell it because people want to read it basically otherwise and because we've been asked many times for it and I'm not how do you say this without sounding egotistical I'm not really in it for the money I want the message out there so if you can go to your library and just request that the library get the book and read it and see if it means something um, I've had people come and say they read the book at the library and one gentleman came and he bought two books because he wanted signed books. Another gentleman came and he bought four books for his family. And I think it's a good book. I think it has a message. So go go to your library, go to your bookstore. You can any bookstore will be able to get for you. It's on Barnes and Noble. It's on Amazon. I, I bought mine on Amazon. <laughs> and what's really funny is when I looked on Amazon in in January, it was ten dollars new but twelve dollars used. So I didn't know <laughs> yes, what that sir. meant. What does that mean, yeah? Right, so so um, Well thank you for talking to us today. This is Dixie Jarko and Tom Cannon for and Author Clark. Showcase and Lewis Clark. <laughs> thank you for watching. If you'd like to be on Author Showcase, please contact us on our Facebook page or at Oshkosh Author Showcase at gmail.com. Otherwise, continue the conversation with Dixie and Tom via social media. Look for Dixie by searching for Daisy Jericho, and please check out her books, The Love Thief and Sparks Fly on Amazon. You can find Tom Cannon on many types of social media, and please check out his book on Amazon, The Tower of Apathy. Our goal is to introduce local authors around Oshkosh and hear their stories. We want to thank the Oshkosh Public Library and the Friends of Oshkosh Public Library for supporting the creation of this show. If you are a writer and are looking for a community, we suggest the Oshkosh Area Writers Club and the Lakefly Writers Conference held each May.